Out of the large cast of characters in Kikonia, perhaps none bears their heart as much as Gunhild. She comments repeatedly on her difficult journey and her complicated relationship to the ace gauntlet knights she's now found herself among. Unlike Koshka, she's not constantly glum. She often has an aloof or upbeat demeanor and has a variety of surprising interests. That's to say nothing of any significant contribution she may have to the plot of Phase 1. Some random facts about Gunhild. She bitterly resents naturally talented super geniuses who can succeed with no effort. She doesn't seem to like herself very much. What she went through to reach her position as a gauntlet knight was horrible and she wishes that she could forget it. She went through all this due to being influenced by the passion of her sister, Maya, who's still trying to become a gauntlet knight. For some reason, Gunhild can't physically visit her siblings back in her hometown. She regularly beats Meow and Jaden in one-on-one -on -one fights. She offers various commentary on what constitutes boy-like behavior. Needing to fight it out, not wanting to admit your own limits, not having a knack for emotional manipulation. She's the focus of Data Fragment 15, where it turns out that she's a high-ranking military officer with a high level of security clearance. Her P3 was average early in life, but then suddenly increased. Some people were able to become Gauntlet Knights because she helped them increase their P3. She has lots of weird hobbies. Her squadmates call her Granny Gunhild. What can we learn about who Gunhild is as a person? How did she become who she is? I'm going to do a lot of speculating here. Let me warn you that it's going to get pretty crazy. You don't have to agree with me, but just hear me out. Hold on tight and enjoy the ride. It all starts with Maya. Maya is the one who really wanted to be a gauntlet knight first. Gunhild was very close to her sister and made some promise early in life, something like, we'll fly through the skies together. Now Gunhild had to do whatever it took to become a gauntlet knight herself. It's hard to become a gauntlet knight. First you need high P3. Gunhild's P3 started out average and increased later. The vast majority of parallel processors are women, so it seems likely that girls have higher P3 than boys. What if Gunhild actually started out as a boy? Let's say Gunner. It's a boy's name sort of similar to the name Gunhild. Also, when it's just the two of them, Gunhild's monster party cafe owning sister just calls Gunhild Gun. So actually, Gunner promised his sister Maya that he'd become a gauntlet knight along with her. But his P3 just wasn't high enough, so he tried the rather drastic step of altering his biology to try to increase his P3. And it worked! With a feminized body, Gunhild's P3 went higher and higher, enough to become a gauntlet knight. Maybe this is why there's no indication that Gunhild ever advised Maya on her own unimpressive P3. Maya was a girl the whole time. Gunhild's trick can't help her. Maybe this is also why she can't go back to see her siblings. Maybe this gender change is a secret from most of them. Who knows what avatar she uses when she talks to her siblings. Maybe they think she's still Gunner. And who knows what sort of information has to be excluded due to conversation filters. Maybe most of her siblings don't know that such a thing is even possible. It's also possible that being female let Gunhild be a secondary secretary. If there's a male equivalent to secondary secretaries, it's not mentioned. This could have given her money and access to military leadership that could have been very useful. That's completely speculative, so I'll let you decide that part for yourself. I will say that if Gunhild was a secondary secretary for some time, then her sister probably was as well. So she'd attained the P3 to be a gauntlet knight, but that's not enough. She also needed enough aerial augmented infantry aptitude. She's supposed to have thrown up a legendary amount while flying in the simulator. So it sounds like she didn't have much of this aptitude either. To overcome this next hurdle, she collaborated with an ambitious military old hand, a General Gustafsson. All military higher-ups are portrayed as male in this story, so I'm assuming General Gustafsson was a man too. I'd guess he was in the Air Force, since aerial augmented infantry skills are similar to being a fighter pilot, and aerial augmented infantry aptitude is what Gunhild needed from him. She allowed him to have his mind copied into her brain so that they had shared control of her body. He was a rare sort who understood the power of gauntlet knights, but he was too old to become one himself, so he got himself put into a younger body so he could have some of the glory and power 
of being a Gauntlet Knight. It was Gunhild's P3 and Gustafsson's skills. But hold on, can you just copy somebody's mind like that? Isn't the top secret lab hidden beneath Geroy Level 4 Heavy Military Research Center struggling and failing to do just that? Yes, this mind copying technique is no trivial task. Its existence is a secret, and it's only used by a very small privileged group. I'd say the 9th Prime Chivalric Order is made largely, if not entirely, of people much like General Gustafsson, old minds possessing young bodies for the power of the gauntlet. In short, Gunner made a ridiculous childhood promise, kind of like Battler, but the difference is that Gunner actually followed through on his ridiculous promise. He became a gauntlet knight no matter what it took, and it took a lot. By the way, as a name, Gunner basically means the same thing as Battler. So that's the theory. As Preston Jacobs likes to say, I'm probably wrong about half of this. But while I'm wildly speculating, I'll share a few more tidbits. Gunhild repeatedly uses slang, often with her concert buddies, which is too fast and new to automatically translate. This is a big deal in a world where almost all language you hear can be translated into something you can understand without a second thought. This seems like an excellent tool for spycraft, a surreptitious communication method that evades normal comprehension and flies under the radar. That raises a bit of suspicion about any of Gunhild's concert buddies, anyone that Gunhild communicates to in this way. And we know that she's trying to induct Stan into her order of the blood vomiting death grapples. One more thing Gunhild's information access when she visits Giroi is defined by an upper limit. There's some information so sensitive that she doesn't have access to it. And we know that having incomplete access means you could get not only an incomplete, but possibly a false story. So while the story of Maya's brain being mishandled and just rotting away is suitably humiliating and pointless, it might also be false. Maybe her brain really was used in artificial Drysic conversion experiments. And for this story B to pay off, it was probably a success. Drysa conversion seems like a great energy source, but for some reason the only thing we hear of it being used for is gauntlet knights, particularly rejection shields. With artificial Drysa conversion, maybe you could have artificial gauntlet knights. Think about this scenario in some future phase. Gunhild attacks Giroi. She hates that place for what it did to Maya. Giroi is defended by some newly created artificial gauntlet knights. But at least some of these knights actually turn and help Gunhild with her assault. They still have a bit of Maya in there, and Maya would want to help Gunhild. Alright, that's enough imagination for now. For the most part, I stick to ideas that are a bit more grounded than these, but it's still fun to think about. Who knows, some of it might even be right. If you never gamble, you'll never win. <laughs>